What's up guys, it's Drak, and you already know what this is. I think that it's honestly not too soon to say that this is maybe the most important blaster of the year. Uh, I'd love to be proved wrong in that regard, but this blaster is incredible. They're starting to show up at Walmarts all across the country, and if they haven't shown up at your Walmart yet, I actually have links down in the description box below where you can pick them and their darts up online, both of which are exceptional, both of which are very fairly priced for hobbyists, for entry level, for just kids who want to actually hit where they're aiming at in their backyard, basement wars, whatever. Um, just a really, really great blaster. But could it be made better? So before we launch into the modification guide, I just want to talk about a few features on this guy that I may have slept on. I was so excited to get a review out to you guys, and I was so stoked to talk about what I thought was just a really cool blaster that we skipped over some very important features, which are very important for this video. So without any more talking about it, let's break it down. Okay, so uh, broken down, you've got the blaster itself. Comes with a full-length magazine. We're not going to fool with the full-length magazine today. We want to talk about the most exciting facets of this product, which are the half-length magazines, the half-length adapters, and the half-length ammo. But we also want to talk about performance, because that's what we're aiming to do today. So firing the blaster with its included magazine, super great. Firing with full lengths is easy, and a variety of different other magazines, the old Explorer magazines, the Worker magazines, even the Metal magazines from Singapore Work. Uh, we need to talk about this. This is the best Omni Magwell I think we've ever seen in our hobby. It's injection molded. It has a great magazine release and it takes a variety of different players and it handles them well due to how this breach system works. Just a real quick note, uh, all of the normal players are 15 rounders. The new Nexus Pro Mags are 12 rounders. I actually like the 12 round package. Uh, I like that in particular, the 12 rounders will still fit in a scabbard very comfortably. That's neither here nor there. This is a pretty good geometry. It clearly mimics a lot of things that we like about katanas. So I actually have two different katanas here. You'll note that one of them has a jet logo on it and the other one does not. That's of course because one of them is from Game Face uh, here in the US. So we'll take the jet one first if you still happen to have old katana magazines those slide into the top catch no must no fuss no problems unfortunately as game face kind of beefed up their version of the magazines you can see here that in an effort to beef up this follower sliding these magazines in the follower catches on the adapter the darts never really load properly because they're constantly lower than they're supposed to be and so while a fully loaded uh, magazine would work fine. The last six, seven rounds or so underneath this are not going to chamber properly. So I would say that the new game face ones are a no-go. In general, I don't like the exposed follower on the Katana magazine at all. I think that it's an inherent flaw, and I really don't agree with the fact that the magazines are uh, ambi. Uh, and that they can be loaded backwards comfortably. Speaking of magazines that can't be loaded comfortably, uh, there's a secondary notch down at the bottom of this adapter and a cutout for the geometry up front, which means that by design, this takes Talon magazine. Whew. That's, uh, that's two competitors' magazines. I would argue the two most important competitors' magazines that it doesn't just accept. It accepts them flawlessly. Super smooth. Super comfortable, very, very cool, especially since I know a lot of hardcore enthusiasts. I myself have 20 of these. I probably have a dozen of these. Most people picked a lane, and now you don't have to choose. The Nexus Pro will just handle whatever your need is. I think that that's a really amazing feature, and I love, 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 love that it's an adapter that you can buy the Pro. For some people, the Pro is worth the cost of just the ammo in the adapter. This can go in your caliber and turn it into a veritable omni, accepting any magazine off the ground kind of thing. Uh, and in addition, it works very, very nicely with their, uh, their built-in magazines. Uh, unfortunately, the one thing that it doesn't do quite as well is uh, the original Dart Zone Pro magazines versus the Nexus Pro magazines, which is why we have to kind of draw this line here. Uh, the, the Dart Zone Pro magazines have this additional like lip. It's a 90 degree where it should be a 45 on the side. And that I think was kind of like built-in differentiation between the Jet magazines originally. And I guess they've decided to abandon that in favor of a very community bias move to make a magazine that works well in everything and uh, a adapter that works with other competitors magazines as well, which is really nice. It's very smart. It's something that I wish companies like Worker and Jet would get on board with. If you make a magwell that can hold everything, people don't have to choose. And I know that the obsession in the industry is how do we get people to buy into our specific ecosystem and then stay there. And while this Amazon Prime versus Netflix uh, subscription model might work for like media, I think that it's really crummy to use in terms of like your tactical gear. It's nice when things play well, nice. So uh, big fan of that. 
but it goes deeper. It goes so much deeper. So we've talked about Magwell compatibility. Let's uh, actually take this blaster and break it down just a little bit further. All right, so this is more or less a naked Nexus Pro and it's got a lot going on for it. They didn't have to do this, but they did. They did it for us or for mass market appeal because it's so friendly. So let's break this down entirely as to what I've stripped off and what is left behind. So I took off the rail attachments, which means that now we have full naked Pictenny up top with a riser. That's really good because nerf darts tend to drop. So having an elevation on your sights is actually kind of cool. I think that we're working on something for this guide that's gonna make it even cooler. However, uh, this is a very nice system. This is full Pictenny, which means it's compatible with anything you can buy on Amazon, cheap airsoft stuff, real steel stuff, if you happen to be an absolute mad lad like I am. Uh, and I, I just dig that it's cross compatible. Speaking of Pictenny, this is what's so special. This would have been so easy to just injection mold as a piece and attach to the priming bar. But they injection molded it in such a way that they're actually hiding and custom molded a, uh, a foregrip to a Pictenny bar underneath. This is just like the Dart Zone Pro. This is a huge premium feature that really lets you customize your kit. And I just, whoa, uh, how cool is that? So that means you can throw any foregrip that you've got on there and we're working on something. We'll show you in a minute. Uh, and then on the back, similar vibe. This is a standard M4 uh, buffer tube stock. Like this is really, really slick. You've got uh, some air release here in the back and we're not done breaking down how cool this is explicitly, but this means that you can throw your favorite airsoft stock on it. And again, you can rip the stock off of your AR and throw that on there too. You can put anything from a $5 mil syrup stock on there. You can put your poverty pony stock on, or you could go buy something so custom Duracoated and exceptional that, uh, that it feels like an absolute dream when you're using it. And it should be very compatible with the different levels of articulation here or you could grab something mid-range off of an AEG uh, and, and just rock and roll. But the really really cool thing here is that there's one magic screw on the back that's normally completely protected by the perfectly serviceable stock that this thing comes with but it does something else. One Phillips head screw removed and then you have a very interesting uh, notch system in here where you perform a quarter turn. This decouples from the back of the buffer tube and removes providing your entire power system custom made to one butt end that's as easy to swap as one, two, three. You don't even really have to put that screw back on which is almost concerning how by design smart that seems to me. I'm just... It's only $50 and it keeps revealing little things to me that makes me all the more impressed. And for our final trick, this muzzle device that seems so interesting that it's a friction fit and just push fit in and pull fit off. Like, I originally wanted to brag about this because I was like, how cool is that? That we can paint it whatever color we want and still comply with all local safety regulations, still use it in the park. I would still advise against painting something that has kind of a very uh, realistic-esque silhouette covered in Pictenny with an M4 stock on it uh, in like new black. I mean, if you actually know how to do a paint job, you should be able to do something other than black and orange. But um, black and orange is still better than all black, and this makes it oh so very simple to add an orange tip back onto your Nexus Pro. There's literally no excuse for not having an orange tip on your Nexus Pro when it literally comes with one that you can remove to make painting easy, breezy, cover girl. And while that feature alone was enough that I was like a big fan of the included muzzle device that honestly is completely unnecessary for function otherwise, it gets better. This OD on this tubing that happens to mate to the ID of this is exactly the same as what Worker and what Hasbro use for a lot of their barrel material, which means that your parts bin has stuff in it that you could use to create a custom break. And in particular, it means that it's compatible with off the shelf, cheapo worker scars, and it's uh, very easy to print either a scar for accuracy, to rip one off of something else, or to just make a really, really cool custom break for this thing. So without any further ado, we're gonna get a spring. We're gonna do a little bit of touch up work here. And we're gonna show you what the Nexus Pro can like really be with a few easy, interesting, very compelling, custom as heck, next level upgrades. Let's take it downstairs.
All right, guys, so in addition to a little bit of light white paint, which because of the white plastic up here, I had to go with white enamel, and I really think that it classes up the Nexus Pro just a little bit. That isn't to say that it doesn't look good without the paint, but I think that adding a little bit of white paint to both sides kind of spices it up, spruces it up a little bit. I love, love, love the price point of this blaster so much so that I'm not gonna complain about the lack of paint. I think that the goal here was clearly to introduce something incredible to an entirely new market. That said, I mentioned it could have some improvements. This site is explicitly designed to be a little bit higher than this site, which kind of compensates for the discrepancy in the rails and lets our pseudo little fiber optic things in here, which are realistically just translucent filament that we've bent into an arc. Uh, the kit will come with translucent filament and you can decide whether you want it or not. Without it, you get a really nice little trough peep setup and with it, you get a really, really handsome, particularly in bright light setup. In addition to that, we've got our scar and muzzle uh, and with the spring replacement, now there are two big options I see for the Nexus Pro for a spring replacement. The SCAR really, before we even give you numbers, let me just show you. The SCAR tightens this up, not that it wasn't already very, very balanced, but when you increase the spring load, you're gonna want something to really tighten up your groupings again. And our SCAR is doing just that. Now this is actually a two print system. This is a funky kind of muzzle brake that Jake and I just really, really dig uh, with a printed SCAR underneath it. It mimics uh, the worker one pretty nicely, but of course in this case comes in vertigo gray. When you buy this kit, I prototyped the whole thing out in vertigo gray from filamentum. When you buy the kit, this is gonna come in orange, probably a, a fusion filaments orange, but the sights, the grip, those are gonna keep coming in filamentum uh, vertigo gray just because I think it's really, really handsome. That said, uh, with Pro Darts, with a spring upgrade, and this spring upgrade came straight out of a DZP Mark I. We just got 168, followed by 160, 164, 162 and 168 again. So I think that it's pretty safe to say that the DZP 1.0 spring, which is the same as the one in the 1.1, beeps this guy up just a little bit. But the one that I'm really excited for, my friends over at Foam Freaks, which have a web store, which I will link in the description box below to all of these accessories that I've used. Um, they sell a pro kit for, or a pro spring for the CETA platform, which happens to be cross compatible in this. And I have it on good authority that that is getting like in the mid to low 200 FPSs, which is just crazy. So we're talking like 220, 230, even 240 with some outliers. But the overall like addition of this line of sight, the fact that this can take any stock, uh, a little bit of light paint there. And then in particular, the thing that I think is changing my user experience the most is this grip. We call this the Caduceus grip. Uh, there's going to be a combo where you can get all of this to dress up your Nexus Pro the same way mine is, if you're interested on nextlevelnerf.com. But the Caduceus grip is, this is like, we, we iterated this thing seven or eight times by the time it was said and done. And it is definitely heavily, heavily inspired by a, a real steel grip that I really, really enjoy using on certain uh, AR platform builds that I've done in the past. But uh, this is remarkably comfortable. It's an AF key. It gives you a really nice inline prime and uh, it's hard to, to go anywhere on it. But overall, I just really, really like this upgrade package. I think that it uh, dresses it up a little bit. I think that it improves your performance. I like that it's cross compatible with the DZP springs. I just think that the Nexus Pro is a really, really cool offering. I told you that it just kept surprising me with things from the Picatinny under the grip to the barrel compatibility and material. I just wanted to point out that while I threw this uh, MFT stock on just because I really like the way that it feels, particularly when priming into my, uh, my grip here, I noticed that either Walmart or Dart Zone, who knows, hid spare O-rings for the breech system in here in the stock. They didn't have to do that, guys. That's so cool. So if you happen to blow an O-ring in your modification adventures or worse yet, lose one, or maybe one just swells up really bad because you used the wrong grease or something, but uh, there are two located conveniently in your stock that you may have never noticed. Uh, I only noticed it while I was swapping out the stock, which is just really, really cool. So uh, change up your optics, change up your scar setup, change up your foregrip, which is I think the most 
most dramatic thing that we've done, and it really just changes the blaster up entirely. We use a DZP spring. There obviously isn't a way to get one of those aftermarket, although I bet if you emailed uh, the, the Primetime Toys company, they would probably uh, be willing to, to work something out with you. Uh, I think it's far, far easier to hit up my friend Evan uh, over at Foam Freaks, pick up something nice from him, jump up into the mid 200s, or honestly, just enjoy it where it's at. 150 is slick, slick performance for something like this to the degree that I've seen people online trying to figure out how they're gonna dress this thing down. And I don't have a solution for you there other than if you throw a scar on it and use full length darts, you should get well under most FPS thresholds as the scar does wick a little bit of performance out of this guy. But absolutely in love with the Caduceus grip, worked really, really hard on it. The Equinox sights took a few different iterations to get exactly Exactly where we wanted them and the scar was honestly pretty easy we just took a lot of existing scar and muzzle brake technology and made it truly truly our own so again vertigo gray for these on the website orange for the uh, the muzzle brake eventually I'm the only blood sucker on my channel and uh, we'll see you guys next time I'm just really really excited for when I get to take this guy to a war cuz I don't think anybody's gonna see that coming what a great blaster. Don't forget to void your warranties. Much love, Nerf on Drag out.